When it comes to bike racing, there are two kinds of power. Number one, the type displayed out on the open road. And number two, the kind of power exerted behind closed doors. These are our top 10 most powerful people in cycling. That light's a bit harsh. You turn it down a bit. Ooh. The Tour de France is the crown jewel of pro cycling and all the revenue that it brings in terms of sponsorship, advertising and TV rights make it the most powerful empire in the sport. The list of cycling events that ASO owns is long and includes the Vuelta Hispania and also the Amgen Tour of California. They can then bundle the TV rights of the smaller events with the Tour de France, controlling the market of the sport's biggest source of revenue. When it comes to the governance of professional cycling, the UCI is the highest authority that exists. Now, after years of controversy under former leaders Hein Verbruggen and Pat McQuaid, in 2013, Great Britain's Brian Cookson was elected as president, with the mandate to restore trust and credibility to the organisation. Whether it's licensing, rules and regulations, rankings, the World Championships, the UCI calls the shots, and Brian Cookson runs the show. RCS owns and operates some of Italy's biggest cycle races, including the Giro d'Italia, Milan San Remo and Terreno Adriatico. And like ASO, who own Le Keep, RCS also own La Gazzetta dello Sport, Italy's biggest sports newspaper. Now interestingly, Veni himself isn't the highest player on the totem pole at RCS, but amongst cycling properties, he's the one that wields the most power. Led by Travis Tiger, USADA, United States Anti-Doping Agency, has proved the most impactful amongst all national anti-doping agencies. Tiger made a name for himself in 2012 when he brought down Lance Armstrong and stripped him of all seven Tour de France titles, as well as banning him from the sport for life. And at the same time, he also exposed several other high-profile figures in the sport, in a case which ultimately brought down Pat McQuaid, the UCI president at the time. Specialized just isn't one of the biggest bike brands in the world, it's also one of the most influential in pro cycling. In 2015, they sponsored three World Tour teams and also won the Giro d'Italia, the Vuelta and both the Men's and Women's Elite Road World Championships. Signard has been at the helm since he founded the company in 1974 and still, age 65, oversees all aspects of the company. Known for his passion for cycling and for his heavy-handed management style, he has been compared to the other Silicon Valley visionary, Steve Jobs. Bartlett is a former head of business development at UEFA and a former sports marketing director at Nike. And in 2014, he brought 11 World Tour teams together in a business venture called Velo, aimed at stabilizing the cycling business model and to increase and look at different income streams for professional cycling. Katusha team owner Igor Makarov became one of the wealthiest men in the world after he founded the multi-billion natural gas empire Itura in the early 1990s. Makarov is president of both the Russian Cycling Federation and the Russian Global Cycling Project, which is known to have a board of members very close to President Vladimir Putin, as well as sitting on the UCI's very powerful management committee. With money, power and connections to the Kremlin, Makarov certainly isn't someone you'd want as an enemy. And, let's face it, on a ride, you'd probably let him half-wheel you for a bit. David Le Partillon has got his fingers in a lot of pies. In fact, too many pies for me to remember. So here's a handy graphic. Okay. His tremendously diverse portfolio leverages a great deal of influence. In fact, he's very well positioned to be the next leader of the UCI. If it's got something to do with elite level cycling in Australia, then somewhere along the line, Jerry Ryan is bound to be involved. Ryan is one of the richest men in Australia, making his fortune from one of Australia's foremost caravan manufacturers, Jayco. A long-time investor in Australian cycling, Ryan is part owner and founder of the Oracle Greenhead cycling team, and in 2013, was the president of Cycling Australia. From late February to mid-April, the spring classics dominate pro cycling, and Walter van den Holter is the man that owns almost all of them. In 2010, the former sports journalist and TV talk show host formed Flanders Classics, bringing together under one umbrella such prestigious races as Game Wevelgem and the Tour of Flanders, amongst others. He made waves the following year by controversially changing the route of the Tour of Flanders, 
in a decision he explained that was to try and attract more sponsors to cycling. But the Belgian fans didn't agree with him. In fact, they absolutely hated it. But in the face of threats, Vanden Holter was unwavering. So those were our top 10 most powerful people in cycling. But who did we miss? Leave your comments down below. But before you start furiously typing on your keyboards, please don't say Lloydy. Anyway, for our video on the top 10 best cycling Instagram accounts to follow, click just up here. And for our top 10 reasons why cycling is different than other sports, one of our longest titles in history, click just down here. And to subscribe to GCN, hold it, don't click on me. Click just in that little box, just there. I don't forget to like this video as well.